welcome to the author it again podcast i'm chris i'm ross and i'm zach with midland radio nice see we did it i'm doing a good job prepping guests lately for a while <laughs> even like return guests i forgot to like say like hey by the way remember you introduce yourself and there'd be they a pause and they're like oh <laughs> yeah but so, that's on them they should know yes as always this is our podcast about anything and everything off road we're socially distanced still because it's the only way we can do the show because ross is in connecticut i'm in kansas city and zach's also in kansas city so we could have done, this is, done like two thirds of us together. Yeah, Kansas City is pretty big, but I think uh, you said Olathe, so I'm in, I'm in Lee Summit. We're still about you're still 35, like 35 45 minutes 45 apart. Oh my gosh, yeah, minutes apart. <laughs> Same metro area, but literally. So my when we moved back to Kansas City, my wife, or at the time she's my fiance, but like she always joked, she's like, "Oh, I can get anywhere in 10 minutes." And I was like, "You need to add 10 to that. We can get anywhere in 25 to 30 minutes. Like, nothing is close, and there's always lights in between us." So, uh, everything's it, made up, and the points don't matter. Correct. That's that's we're we're that's drive time in the two metro cities, area. two states, one metro area. We make it. Yep. Actually, a ton of cities, but yeah, two main cities. And yeah. <laughs> anyway, no one cares. If we're flyover. It's no. Fine. Don't come, but welcome. Uh, <laughs> I feel like that's the ultimate Midwest thing. Like, we don't want any of you to come. And once you're here, hey, we're, we're glad you're here. Like, just <laughs> the news. Speaking of something, yeah. I'm glad it's here, but also I'm not really welcome to it. Uh, <laughs> Great I segue. I don't like it. Sorry. The Silverado EV. You don't? I, okay. I, uh, I think it looks like an abomination of a render. Like, it has to be a concept. Please don't let that be the actual looking truck because it's awful. Interesting um what okay so let's back up so chevy this past week revealed the silverado ev which massive missed opportunity based on the sale panels and the fact that there is an absence in their lineup they could have called it the avalanche whereas some people are referring to it the evilanche or the avalanche with a capital e on the end or in the middle denote yeah or in the middle well <laughs> avalanche i don't know um just to you know denote the electric portion but it's it's chevy's equivalent of the hummer ev and what we'll know as the gmc sierra ev and chris doesn't like it and why doesn't chris like it what about I, it? We, we we joked about it with robbie that like looks of vehicle are subjective to the individual user like 100 i when i and i doing a crappy job of my producing jobs because i have not put up a picture of it yet <laughs> you're focusing uh, on talking about how much you hate this thing yeah well that's i was like i can't just i it like the f-150 lightning looks like an f-150 and then it has some body panels etc mm -hmm. that kind of are like squared off to like they remove the grill and stuff like that but for this thing i just eh, Maybe it's trying it, very hard. It's trying very hard, but I might also be showing my age a little bit. Of like, it reminds me of like when Ford went to like the round Taurus and like the Taurus wagons and all that stuff. And it feels like they mm -hmm. just rounded the whole thing off. Yep. And it it's not bad. It's just it's a deliberate ploy at showing the world what a Camaroified futuristic Chevy pickup would be. Well, and that's what we discussed with Robbie, like after we right. stopped recording and now like we can kind of mm -hmm. talk about it a little bit, like there's potential for EV Camaro name things in the future. Mary Barra spoke about it in the press yeah, conference, but this, she, you I know, just... she said, so this is Ultium platform and it's this, it's the GMC Hummer, GMC Sierra. And then she, you know, alluded to some kind of EV sports car on the same platform. So it's it, it might just be the rst trim where everything's body colored yeah. like the 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 pro work truck style version i saw was not so much as better. heinous like it oh, and, just... and the and we're, we're jumping here but the trail boss actually looks pretty good so the problem with the rst aside from the hundred and seven thousand dollar price tag is that the what would be the grill is uh is body colored so it's just all blue there's no opening in the front it's it's just it's all one color well and versus the work truck has avalanche like cladding which looks kind of awesome in my opinion right. but it's it, it's a it's a difficult design and it's it's equally troubling to think that it might be the direction that they take the 
Silverado itself in the next generation, you know, because they just refreshed it for this current model year. But right. it, it wouldn't be a surprise for it to go in that direction. And that's that's already a body style. I'm not a huge fan of you. That is my your kids, family. You? God, Again, every that's time. Once a show. Yep. 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 It's like the Mac can't keep up with my, or <laughs> Zoom can't keep up with how fast I'm clicked. Anyway, uh, uh, here's like Lightning versus Silverado. Sure. Maybe Silverado is more of a concept than opposed to an actual what the production truck's going to look like. Yeah, the that silence thing, means that no one really knows. <laughs> yeah, the thing is, I mean, theoretically, this is what the Chevy will look like because it, you know, it is Ultium platform. Right. So all the hard points are there. Um, but it, it really is a matter of, do you want a pickup that happens to be electric or do you want an electric vehicle that's to pick up? That's the design difference between the two. So yeah. like the I'm the science teacher in me now is starting to take over. Like the Silverado is more aerodynamic. Like it makes more sense. It is. Didn't the what sail did they say wins, it's oh uh, no, I'm thinking of that new Mercedes concept that got a 0.17. Did you see yeah, that? Exactly. Yeah. Oh, the thing that crazy. no one that that they kept quoting the range on yeah. for a thing that doesn't actually move. Yes, I remember, yeah. I remember the Mercedes. It, it was like that Volkswagen. What was it, that Volkswagen thing from like ten years ago? Uh, was that an EQ one? E- was that e- no, not e- it can't be EV one. Um, it's not. You know EV1. what I'm thinking of though? That awkward looking two door yeah. with like a three cylinder that. It's like a 0.15. The, the tires are like drag. 145, yeah, was, I think. Like they were like it reminded me of like the stuff I built in high school for like Electrify America type stuff. Not like Excel America. one. Um XL like, one. Yeah. What was the electric? I built an electric wannabe race car in high school with some other people in a thing, but anyway, so that's so that's the the questions and concerns about so, the Chevy design. Well, the design, right. but like range is 400 miles. Awesome. For the big battery. Yep. Yes. Like 350 kilowatt charging is available. The recouping 100 miles in 10 minutes, that's a big deal. That's a big deal. Now, I will say like that's a big deal here because like if I can get t- 100 miles in 10 minutes, that's almost the equivalent of a fuel stop. And that's also the average person does isn't the average commute like in the 30s. So Something like you that. You stop once every few days the same way it you do with the It depends on where Zach and I are driving to work from. <laughs> 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 like here to downtown is like 25 miles. Like that's that's right, still a 50 right, road right. trip. Like that's not, that's not awful, but. Yeah. So, I mean, the numbers are good. They have, you know, some nonsense PR thing called wide, o- wide open Watts mode for wow, clever. Uh, 664 horsepower, 780 foot pounds of torque, zero to 60 and 4.5, which is not slow considering if this that's, thing weighs any anywhere near what the hummer weighs it's probably seven thousand pounds plus that's like what sports sedans used to be consistently yeah um, Again, these things are gonna weigh how much i mean 664 780 and 064.5 is like s65 amg numbers yes you know like it's fast like it's fast yeah and the work truck is supposedly 510 and 615 which is also not nothing so the uh, for, boring version is 500 horsepower the boring version is 510, but again, power to weight, no bueno. So we'll see. And then, you know, they crammed as much tech nonsense into it as they can. 17 inch center screen, 14 inch color heads up display, which is actually kind of awesome because heads up display is something that should be mandatory for safety so across the board. Is that so when you're quoting 14 inches there, is that like up pro, what's projected up through the windshield? They didn't you think say. that's 14 inch diagonal because like that's actually then starting to kind of take a, bit a of lot of windshield of <laughs> like, <laughs> it's like google glass <laughs> like i use i have my little one on this on the suburban like it's it's yeah gm does they, it's okay they do like it, it well. i can see it very well the information that's there is never quite the information that i would want to be there some of them are configurable i think on the c8 when i had it it was configurable you could okay. definitely configure it between just like digital and like the analog 1980s like c4 tack yeah but like i know mine will uh, go between the phone the audio the it what it'll do the the truck's navigation system but i never i don't do that i just plug in and use android auto it will not receive anything from android auto 
that would be the one that I'd be like, can you guys just like one more line mm-hmm. of communication? I'm sure that's in the pipeline. I mean, keep in mind that everything, this is going to be a 2024 model year truck. Okay. So we're, we're still a little ways out, but it's just light years ahead from my 2017 right now. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, what's the trope about the rate at which tech, you know, moves, but, well, that was, and then the last few things I want to talk about here, towing. So 10,000 pounds towing capacity, uh, 1300 pound payload, which really isn't that much considering the towing capacity. And then the work truck tows less. It only tows 8,000 and has a 1200 pound payload capacity, which is less than like the Honda Ridgeline. And supposedly there's a max trailering package with a 20,000 pound tow capacity, which means you'll probably get about 12 miles of range. And the only other really exciting things are all wheel steering, which, you know, means somebody will uh, do like a tune on it and it'll, it'll be able to do crab walk and yeah. And, and pirouettes and everything. And the mid gate, the mid gate is back. The Avalanche's best party trick was that instead of like a traditional pickup with the cab and the bed being separated and there was a gap between them, they were just one piece because it was actually a Suburban and you could fold the middle between the bed and the tail and the cab down and it extended to make the five foot, 10 inch or five and a half foot bed into what was basically like an eight foot space. Right. And they brought it back for the silverado ev which is why everybody's joking about calling it the avalanche but it's such a great thing because you know whether it's a canoe or whether it's a kayak or whether it's you know two by fours or like other stuff for the house or a quad and the front tires need to nudge a little bit further forward so you can close tailgate it's a great 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 feature that extends the length and keeps it from it the load from hanging out over the back of the truck. And it's, it's really an underappreciated thing in the pickup truck world. Not that the avalanche is the model of what a pickup truck should be, but it really, you know, denotes the difference between clever engineering and just kind of a standby. So I thought it was cool. I think a lot of people were reinvigorated by the idea of the avalanche. I wouldn't be surprised if, you know, come the next few months, cars and bids and bring a trailer have huge spikes in avalanche prices and <laughs> acknowledgement because of this. But yeah, it was uh I couldn't find a good trail boss. Interesting photo. week. That is a terrible photo. <laughs> it's a terrible photo, but I like it better as the, the way this looks compared to the the RST. Yeah. The proportions like are still truck. Like the proportions yeah. are troubling, but that looks it like looks, a ridge line to me. Yeah. <laughs> you, yeah. First, yeah. It looks like a first gen ridge line, which I'm, I'm going to blame know. the crappiness of the photo there, but it does first have gen similar... ridge line looks the way it did because of the avalanche. Just saying. And you love to brag on those avalanches. I fucking love it. Yeah. I mean, given <laughs> I owned one for like almost eight years. Forever. So yeah. Yeah. I do. I do have the opportunity to buy it back if I want. So. Don't um <laughs> uh, i know while, while I know. you are talking let's tell us about you did projects i did projects the toolbox for the gx trunk is finally done which that's and so i i misconstrued that as you were like installing onboard air really it was just a no, box to hold your compressor no. it's a box to hold a compressor and a whole bunch of tools just something like safe and secure that won't move around because the gx in, in the cargo area has four hooks and nothing else to affix things yeah. to. Uh, you and you can't drill Toyota. through. Yeah, you can't drill through anything because that's where the third row seats are. Not that I'll ever actually use them, but yeah. So I finished the toolbox. Uh, never the say never. Phone, the uh, over, if I went, oh, the um, wildly overcomplicated phone mount is <laughs> done short of the super glue, Gorilla Glue setting overnight tonight. And that's it. I have some fun stuff that will hopefully show up via FedEx this week and then the project really begins. So I'm trying to find the, the image for where you mounted. Mounted what? The your phone? phone mount. Yeah. Oh no, well, so I save it for when it's actually done. Okay. Well it which will hopefully be tomorrow. Actually <laughs> by the time eh, called we have a show Tuesday, it'll be done for Tuesday show. 
we, we have shows like every every recording day for the next two weeks like we we sent emails and everyone said yes i know, <laughs> I know. usually it's like 25 percent yeah like, oh my We're god like, oh everyone said yes okay <laughs> it's, uh, it's usually four shows a month i think we have 12 so right yeah yes. so i i have no updates other than nothing it snowed and was awful and the suburban was great still like it just it the weighs French a lot lines? the reddish lines don't slip i mean like yes if you mash the throttle everywhere yes it slips but like it's a winter rated all-terrain it's doing just fine in the snow i we haven't had any um we kind of had some weird like ice midweek was that like thursday morning it was like ice then snow mm. and then i think saturday morning we got snow again right <laughs> my days are running yeah. together <laughs> so no, I, I think you're right yeah so I had to get out and actually like scrape the driveway for Thursday morning's crap because it was like ice and then snow on top of it. My driveway faces north, which means it'll never be clear of ice unless I actually get out and are proactive every time. But the the one on Saturday, I used the the leaf blower on the, the <laughs> light dusting that we got to clear that. But no, the truck, it seriously, it it moves great. It yeah, heated steering wheels are the best. Um, yeah, I think that's all I've got. I, I had to put bird feeders in it today, which I now like my on the cargo space. There's this there's this tray that like lifts up and there's room underneath the tray to like store mm-hmm. stuff uh, that now has a lot of bird seed in it. My 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 grandmother's bird feeders outside her uh, apartment fell over. And so like the ground's too cold and frozen to like rehang them up. So like I had to throw it all in the back of the truck and all of her bird feeders were full of bird seed and they're like squirrel protected. So it makes it impossible for the lids to come off. I'm like, I don't even know how we fill these things. You should take that out of your truck before squirrels try to find their way into your truck because well, they in, will. It's in the garage right now. It so it'll be matter. okay. And I did no. vacuum it all out today. So it's like, they, gave me some license and shit will find their way in. <laughs> you need to take that out immediately. Yeah. Uh, Seriously. Just parenting tip 101 there's always something that a small rodent is going to want in my vehicle. <laughs> Like the, the joke, child. the joke Instagram reel I sent you the other day where the guy like turned over the car seat and like three things yeah, fell out and then yeah. all of the stuff fell out. And part of you was like, is this real? And I'm like, yeah, it's kind of real. Like It's, it's a like sarcastic. the cartoon thing when you open the closet and like a ball falls out and then like a doll falls out and then the cascade of everything collapses yes, that's, on you. Yeah. yeah. Turning over child safety seats after they've been installed for a long time is always a heinous experience. You never know what's coming. You're like, there's that. Like. Anyway. Oh man. Anyways, so. Zach, where do you want to start? <laughs> well, you, well, to tell you the truth, I, I'm kind of interested to hear a little, a little bit about your guys' build. So, um, you know, it's not often when I when I come on one of these podcasts, I hear about uh, EVs, and it's um, it's also pretty rare that I hear about people with Chevy builds. So, you mentioned <laughs> you had a, a suburban. You know, yep. t- typically I run into a lot a lot of uh, Jeep and and Toyota fanatics for the off roading. So, I, I'm really curious well, to hear about. Both of your builds, just a little bit about that first, and I can <laughs> jump in. Uh, well, we are your, you know, collective traditional Toyota fanatics. Chris just happens to be in a Jeep, a uh, Chevy at the moment. <laughs> I'm, it's the four kid issue. Yeah. So we have a we we still have a, a Sequoia. Um, we had a '94 Land Cruiser that we just we just outgrew it. Like the kids got big, and uh, there's no latch system in it. And and to be honest, the 94 is old enough. There's no airbags in it even. So uh, we moved from that no traction. Nothing. Yeah. No traction control, nothing, which just means it was actually great in the snow because you four wheel drift everywhere. Um, we moved from that to a, the 08 Sequoia and realized fairly quickly after one little league season that like even the back of the Sequoia wasn't big enough. Like we we're still having to lower the third row. Um, one of my kids is a catcher. And so when he goes to a, a game, he literally looks like he's going to the airport with his carry-on bag, like just like a hockey bag. Him. Yeah, like a hockey bag, but it's catcher. I caught so. in the high school. I know. Yeah. Uh, so we had we had to go out and find a suburban. So now we're stuck with two giant white SUVs, and the suburban <laughs> is slowly. I brought a Premier, and so like the fronts dropped, like for gas mileage and everything. So I'd like to. I've, I've talked to some people about getting the nose a little lifted, but it's in the works. Um, it's, it's got all terrains. I've got max tracks. Uh, I have a very old Cobra radio that's like a throwback from my Jeep days when I had I had an 04 <laughs> Wrangler forever ago. And I think that was the first radio I bought for a vehicle. And it still works. Like, it's still around. But, like, 
think everybody's owned a Cobra at some point. We're we're gonna get to the topic here in a little bit of like I'm I'm kind of behind the times with my CB. <laughs> yep. Yep. And the Ross is yours is way better than mine. So you talk my build. Well, it's not a build yet. It's it's you have uh, partners. I have a tire. I have partners. Yeah. So <laughs> so I, I uh, I've been through three forerunners, and decided to buy something a little newer. And because prices right now are are just stupid in the forerunner world, I bought a GX four sixty. Um, you know, four years old CPO. So it's like less expensive than forerunners by a substantial margin um and i have toyo had supplied at3s uh warren sent me a vr evo motegi sending trail lights and uh iron man is helping me out on the suspension and bumper so it's a it's definitely the biggest build that i've done and it, it's it's happening quick like i think as of next week uh it's it's really really happening like things are being chopped up and removed next week so yeah it's a, it's an interesting truck and uh I'm, I'm really eager to make it not look like it's you know just being parked at the supermarket <laughs> so i also need to get shit going because I'm, I'm i'm staring at the clock i got like two months as of yesterday that i have to be in moab so so you'll yeah. be at that first event there in Moab, sounds like. It's yeah, it's not really an event. It's um, so I ride for ATV Rider and UTV Driver, and we're mm. doing a like work trip out there. So <laughs> I'm going to drive out there and run some trails with that on a couple off days when we're not on the quads. So yeah, crazy. Exactly. Well, great. Yeah. Well, I, I'm, uh, I'm glad to be on with you guys and talk to you a bit. So you, you mentioned CB radio um, and we still do CB radio. That's, that's yep. kind of what Midland uh, uh, cut its teeth on when we first, um, when we first were developed as an organization in, in the ni- late 1950s, uh, we were selling CB radio and uh, we were selling a lot of them and CB was huge back then. Everybody was using them. Um, over the years though, um, you know, starting in, in the 2000s, uh, there's been a strong shift towards uh, GMRS frequencies, which is mm-hmm. uh, what, what the products that I manage, which uh, GMR, GMRS mobiles or the micro mobile uh, vehicle installed ones, and then walkie talkies are the other product. Uh, most, most walkie talkies you'll buy from a store will be uh, GMRS or FRS frequencies, which are uh, overlapping mm-hmm. with GMRS. So, uh, but yeah, the, the exciting thing uh, we've had, you know, with the Micro Mobile, it's been a very high growth product line for us. We've introduced it to the overlanding and off-roading communities. Um, it's been received extremely well. It's also been uh, received pretty well in, in agriculture. Uh, but for, for off-roading, it just, uh, you know, it just fits the use case perfectly. Um, the advantages it has of CB would be uh, it's a much, uh, you know, voice clarity. Um, you know, you're talking AM versus FM. So like CB, it kind of sounds like people are mumbling a lot. Um, <laughs> with GMRS, uh, you don't get that. You hear everything clearly. Mm-hmm. Um, the other big advantage is, you know, CB can only be four watts, uh, whereas Micromobile or GMRS frequencies can be up to 50 watts. Um, <laughs> and wow. currently we offer up to 40 watts. But okay. the, exact, the exciting thing and the reason I think Aaron had me on today is uh, to talk about our release that's coming up on um, I guess will be the day before this airs, we'll be okay. releasing, be launching the MXT 500, which is our 50 watt micro mobile. Oh. Um, very cool radio. There's a couple of reviews out on it um, already on YouTube. You can find um, not a Rubicon production has done one. He, he puts out some really good content, really funny mm-hmm. uh, YouTuber if you, if you don't follow him yet, but um, he, do, he does the off-roading and he also does a lot of uh, radio stuff very recently, but um very cool radio. You get the full 50 watts of power. It's IP66, which will make it great for the ATV and UTVs as well, right? The side-by-side. Yeah, definitely. It's gone, it's gone intercom port, which we did just for the ATV, <laughs> UTV community, because uh, we know you guys like to splice and be able to talk uh, with the, the <laughs> passengers in the vehicle. So um, True. Uh, <laughs> it Dude, comes I've, with... I've always wanted to be in a vehicle where I need to wear an intercom. 
Like I, where it's rally car off road yep. stuff. I've never been in one. That's my goal. <laughs> it would be, I think it would be cool. I've never used one myself, but um, you know, we added the feature just because we, we had enough, uh, you know, people in razors and whatnot that mm-hmm. reach out and say, Hey, you really need to put this intercom port. And so we listened, we did it. Um, so I think it'll be good for, for the type of work you're doing. I'd like to get you one ahead of your, uh, you know, your trip out there. Um, so sure. Definitely. Well, you, well, you need to give me your address a, l- a little bit later after, and I'll, I'll send you one that you can check out and review and, and take with you there. Sounds um, like a plan. But, you know, in addition to uh, to those features, we also, uh, we have a, a few other features we added. Um, we made this both narrow and wide band. Um, and so previously it was just narrow band. And right. narrow band communicates narrow band very effectively. But narrow to wide band, um, there's a slight uh, softening of the voice. So if you're on the same band with each other, it's just a little bit clear now and you can mm-hmm. choose. So if the people you're talking to are on narrow, you can talk to them on narrow. If they're on wide, you can use wide. Um, it's programmable. We've got empty storage channels for, uh, for what we call the GMRS nerds. So a lot of people, they want to hook this up to the computer. They want to program it. They want, they have different repeaters that have different split tones and they want to program empty channels Dude. with it. Do all kinds of stuff that I don't do. But. <laughs> there are some. Do you, you want to talk about nerdery? Like some of the people who go deep into the radio stuff, like be it GMRS or hammer, like it's it's like a snowball effect for some well, people. G, GMRS, you, you need to get a, a certificate. Or? You need a you license. You have to have a you have to have a license. So okay. um, you you don't have to know anything. You, you just have to pay the government i guess okay 70 bucks for the pri- privilege of using public airwaves okay it's a five sounds, year sounds about right application it, it, yeah it's i think it, you get five years <laughs> out of your license and it's 70 bucks okay and you can apply yeah, for a family I, I th- well it's 10 years uh, now and i think they're gonna oh, actually really? reduce it to 35 they haven't done that officially okay. i think but but they they were saying they were going to Oh. Uh, and, and I think the reason why is they, they maybe don't get as many people paying for the license as uh, as our actual GMRS users. So so I oh, think well, they're trying to incentivize people to just sign up and, and, and actually and go for it. Yeah, actually mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. that was when I when I got my drone certificate, that was one of those things is like now now the government knows where I am. They already knew, but still like <laughs> oh, they know. Yeah. They do. They know. Oh, they no, Actually, so you don't want to get me started on on the government and all the stuff they know that I don't want them to know. Exactly. Well, I had it. I had a scare. They know right you said it'll be a whole different podcast. <laughs> well, yeah, I, right. A I slippery, had a, slippery a fun scare right after I got my drone certificate. Ross, you can stop me if I've already told this on the show, but like, I had someone come to the house for the Department of Homeland Security business card, and I was like, "Well, that's bullshit." Like, and I actually like researched the guys. Like, no, that was actually a Homeland Security agent. So, like, I eventually called him back thinking it was drone related like because i live near an airport maybe that was like i was like this should be the faa shouldn't be homeland security but whatever no i had bought a switch for the land cruiser to to turn on and off the fog lights and the way it was packaged and where it came from is also similar to packaging for people buying plastic switches to um take their semi-automatic locks and make them fully automatic locks and i was like no i bought an led like on off switch for my truck and he was like cool and that was it i was like so so lie <laughs> like <it's>, yep. <laughs> yeah there wasn't anything past that yeah, yeah. no but i forgot I, about that story it's been i was, awesome told I was freaked out for a little bit there i was like wait I was like, <laughs> yeah the government is actually talking to me what is that no it's just yep. turned up turned on some fog light so um well cool that's that that made me think of another thing is like I have old FR so I have my CB and I have old FRS radios so when I go hang out with my off road buddies that all have their GMRSs I just have to make sure that I my channel is the right frequency for them or the mm-hmm. other way around mm-hmm. and uh, and then I can talk to them <laughs> yeah and you guys probably, you, I'm sure being off road there's no repeaters nearby so you can just use like a channel one through eight something like that is what yeah. you usually yep. end up using. Yeah, it's a, it's something super low normally. They're they're like it's they've they've got longer six, seven, numbers and digits, us. and I'm like two, like yeah. yeah. And as long as you guys are relatively nearby, the FRS should work even even in the vehicle. Um, 
it, it does kind of stunt your um, range being in the vehicle, it sort of acts like a Faraday cage, you know, okay. it keeps you from getting a full transmission out, uh, which is why we make the mobiles where they have the antenna, you know, outside the vehicle. But yeah, uh, if you're all within like a quarter mile, half mile, it should work. We're, we're, we're normally pretty close. <laughs> yeah. You guys have been groups do you usually go out and how, how many people? Um, our groups are normally around five or six. Like every, I've been on a couple where it was massive. It was like 25 rigs. And I was like, oh, I'm probably going to hold much. off. It's on a parking those. lot. Nope. It was. And it, it really was wow. like more of a social gathering where we'd all stop in a parking lot. Everybody could talk. And then it would just drive to the next parking lot through back roads. <laughs> so it's very, very Midwest. Not, <laughs> not, not actual. Yeah. Like, off-road travel so, um but yeah ross you, you yeah you up in more. maine i've been in groups of like six spread out over three and a half miles on the quads okay. well side by sides except for me on a quad so yeah it, it, and it's pretty crazy because you know you'll come to a stop and everybody will be talking and you're like silent i can't see anybody i can't hear anybody but they're perfectly clear over the radio yeah, no, with, with groups that big, uh, you, you definitely need some some sort of wattage there. You can't get away with just a handheld. Um, and, you know, for, for these, with these 50 watts, um, depending on the terrain, they might be overkill, but uh, for, for like a, even three miles apart, because these things can go, uh, depending on, the, you know, with radio, the, the bigger deal is like, are there a bunch of impediments, obstructions, whatnot, mm -hmm. but um you know, in our early testing, we get 20 miles pretty easily. So you could wow. get away with 20 with the, yeah. Yeah. Um, so, and, and again, you know, we, we've got relatively low impediment, uh, being here in Missouri, you know, um, mm -hmm. we, we, we can see pretty far. Um, Hey, the, but, that um, picture's a GX just saying yeah. well, the, the, <laughs> the marketer in me sees the missed opportunity of you and I doing this show through the radio tonight. Cause we're about line of sight <laughs> probably about 20 miles like you know we, we actually would probably could reach because i don't think That's either of us are in a valley uh no i'm kind of up city. on a hill even yeah yeah you could probably reach me that, that, that's gonna help for sure yeah we might have to uh, figure that one out <laughs> that's funny so this is this is the antenna you were talking about right that's the antenna so this isn't the antenna that comes included with it uh okay. this is an antenna that you can add on extra that's our ghost antenna it's a uh, 3db uh, it, it's my favorite antenna just because it's so sleek, uh, small, like discreet. No, um, and you still get fantastic range out of it. That's awesome. So yeah, it, it's before. better. It's better th in my opinion than those like fire stick style, like the whip. Oh my god! It's, I was that's a hundred percent what was on my TJ. I was <laughs> in a, in my, my garage working on some stuff for the truck an hour ago. Looking, I have two different length fire sticks, and one's like a flexible one, and one's a, like a rigid one. I was like, God, these are abominations. They take up like half my garage wall. <laughs> I've never seen that before. That's actually, that's so cool. I had no clue that that was so a thing. On, on this uh, description here, it has NOAA weather radio built into it too? Oh, yeah. Yeah, so that's something we are kind of <laughs> famous for. So, you know, apart from our CBs and walkie-talkies, um, we, we're very well known for weather radio. Um, and, and we sell a ton of them. We give a ton away, you know, to emergency managers all over like after the kentucky disaster you know we we go there we make some donations we give away radios and uh, and try to help underserved people get their hands on it because uh, you know that's a big deal especially in rural areas where yeah. some of these homes aren't very robust um you know they, they need early information and they need redundant systems to get the uh you know the weather safety alerts because I, I remember i was around um, i lived in pittsburgh kansas uh, when the Joplin tornado happened, and, you know, everybody thought that they were going to get the alert on their phone. And I, I was there after the event. Um, I, I was a bartender at Chili's at the time, and we brought some food from Chili's and water to, uh, you know, to give out to a church that was helping people. And, and they mentioned that they, like, they didn't get the alert until two hours after it because of cell phone latency. So oh, the, no. these weather radios, they're not my subject right. of expertise. Right, right. But um, it, it's very important to have these redundant systems if you live in the Midwest or a place that's you know subject to extreme weather. Um, flip side of things, what do storm chasers use for radio? You know, I'm not too sure. I, I don't. Uh, I don't ever ride with the uh, with the storm chasers. But 
I assume they listen to, uh, you know, standard AM. They probably do have like NOAA weather that they follow as well. Um, mm -hmm. I'm sure they have a, a few different sources that they follow. We've got it. We actually have an um, on staff meteorologist, Bruce Jones. He's done a great job promoting NOAA. In fact, um, you know, it's it's our it's debatable to say that we wouldn't have NOAA today if not for Bruce and all the work he's done to uh, to keep it around and support it. Because you know when cell phones came around, they wanted to kind of push it aside as old technology. But like like I mentioned, what we found like in Joplin and other events, they try to send these messages up through the cell phone towers all at once, and they can't. And you get cell phone <clears throat> latency, mm -hmm. and so people don't receive the alert until it's too late. Yeah. And so because of those right. events and the right. way they've happened, NOAA's kind of, NOAA Weather Radio has kind of taken uh, some, a few steps forward over the past few years. The other thing I, I, I wow. think that people always have a misconception of is like the sirens are to alert people outdoors. They're not, they're not to alert the people in their homes. They're not that loud. They're loud, but like. Yeah, if you're sitting in your house with your headphones on, you're yeah. not, you're not hearing it. You're not hearing the sirens. Um, uh, is I, I you know it makes you wonder about all the other applications too and i mean like the fires out west and you know the hurricanes and such i'm, I'm sure there's places so to dabble with that the as well. last weather radio i had i think was from midland and i i i did go in and deactivate uh hurricane watch and hurricane warning mm -hmm. like i don't that was you, not you gonna be an issue for campus? me no we're not you don't need that up there my favorite part was teaching in florida <laughs> and talking about i was gonna say you lived in florida you could right yeah i I didn't use it down there. I was I was very young and not intelligent. I I stayed for Hurricane Charlie. I did not evacuate. So like we can, I don't think it. I, have I told That's this a story? conversation I, for a different time? Yeah, two, I I lived in a house you with science Christ. Yeah, two guys from Ohio, one guy from Kansas, and we went. We stayed in the house for all of the hurricanes. So Ron Ron White was very inspirational in his hurricane comedy at the time. So that was we were idiots. Sure. Um. Yeah, if you have enough beer you can survive a hurricane that's that's oh, why that's heard. literally they shut down school on friday we went to walmart <laughs> thursday night and bought beer like if we yeah. were like if the, the hurricane's gonna cut I the power to, we have beer at least like <laughs> i have to text that to my dad my dad is the most weather obsessed person i know if you have enough beer you can handle just about anything that's right that's right but yeah i know so uh but uh, the 500 um, and all of our micro mobiles, except for the MXT 400, they do have the NOAA, which it does okay. come in handy. Like you mentioned, like places like California, uh, you don't have cell phone reception um, and there are wildfires and some other things to look out for. So if you set it up to, to get the weather alerts, you know, you'd be notified of that. Interesting. Yeah, it's, you know, the off-road automotive scope is so small when you think about it and like we we're largely using it for fun you know yeah. you actually saving other, people's lives is so yeah. much so much more important well and like in an ag scenario it makes tons of sense like it's, it's just drastically better to self you might not have cell phone reception but if you can radio back to the house like mm -hmm. yeah and that ag is a huge market for us we we target them with this product as well i think you pulled up one of those pictures it was uh, yeah, one it was, of the former photos yeah. um <laughs> Uh, and this is a good this is a good one for ag as well um, because you know with the IP66 it's dust proof and those guys deal with a lot of dust and grain mm -hmm. um, and it it tears up their mic like their mic gets stuffed with that stuff mm -hmm. but when you've got the dust proof mic this will hold up a lot better for the farmers and uh, hopefully last them you know a lot longer. I didn't notice that that picture was actually on like the right. a pillar of a combine or something oh, man. i didn't notice john that deere, until now john deere green is a very specific color yeah i was <laughs> looking at the radio i was looking at the background that's funny yeah so, so, so the our two biggest markets would be the off-roading overlanding and then the farming ag you know the use cases are just are just so obvious you know when you're off-roading you're in a large group you need the one to many communication you don't have cell phone service uh safety is paramount so you you want to be in communication and uh, with agriculture, you, you've got people in different vehicles, you've got limited cell service, if any, and you've got to communicate to stay on track and, and coordinate doing the right thing. So, you know, the use cases are really obvious there. Uh, power sports is another one, you know, UTV, ATV. Uh, we've even seen a lot of RV, like not just people RV caravanning, but uh, RV camping as well. So they'll keep the micromobile in the RV and they'll send people out with walkie talkies, camping, collect wood, whatever. Mm -hmm. And they can they can stay in touch. So oh man, I'm sure that's exploded over the last since January of 20. 
big new market. Yeah, we, we, we've been attending a lot of RV events. We see uh, people installing the RV. So we're, we're all for it. And uh, yeah, the, the RV market is, is nuts right now. I don't think you can get an RV. I, I think, I think the inventory is um, in the local places is like less than 20%. It's crazy. <laughs> And it's 20% over what it should cost. Oh, yeah. I, I just got invited to the Kansas City RV show. I was like, what? I oh, guess you need to go. If you're going to push it out, like, I guess. Yeah. Like, and the drinking rule is you do a shot for every time there's an airbrushed mural. <laughs> Ross, I have to drive home. <laughs> <laughs> just radio to your, to your, well, no, your kids. How expensive that Uber is from downtown. Yeah, that would be <laughs> Uh, just, is the radio show downtown is it a sprint center or somewhere uh, i think it's uh bartle it's rv oh, okay make it what uh, what is this box that i'm looking at on the on the screen here so, so for the great. audio listener small small black box mounted in the passenger footwell area it looks so this is pretty cool this is one of our micro mobiles as well this is our uh, mxp 275 and uh the interesting thing about this is the radio itself doesn't have any controls on it. The mic has it all. So if you probably scroll through, you'll find one of the, yeah, so there's a 275 mic. It's a, not a great angle, but um, all of the controls, power on, what have you, um, uh, volume, channel, uh, whatever you want to do, it's all on the mic. So you can hide the unit away, save dash space, oh. and just have a, a mic hanging there. And what we oh. actually... We will have the 50 watt version of this coming out um, this summer as well. So, is that's there something any, to look out for? Any like pro con of having the controls in the mic versus the controls like in the body of the radio? Or what, well, Chris? What do you what? What does it say? It's it's about it's about space. Like I is it just space? If if you don't have the room for the the actual radio box close enough where you can then adjust channel and stuff like that, I mean, sure. dash. You can actually slide that down underneath, and then all the mic has all the dobs and nials. Or oh yeah, man, but Words you don't are like hard lose, You don't lose any capability by correct putting everything in the in the mic itself, do you? No, no. All the features are uh, are the same there. So hmm. it, uh, n nothing uh, nothing lost as far as uh, features. The the one difference between the fifty watt versions of these will be you can program. Um, the one that doesn't have the integrated mic. So the 500 that we're launching, it is programmable, but the 575 will not be. Okay. Hmm. Gotcha. Very interesting. So where else should we go? I know you, get, you guys are doing like cell boosters and just well, I, everything. I think I put cell boosters down there as a oh, question. Oh, you put cell? Yeah, oh, that was a question I mark. I thought that was... Are we doing sorry. cell boosters? Can we talk? <laughs> Jumping ahead of things. <laughs> no, we, uh, we, we, we're not doing cell boosters right now. I mean, that, that's something we'd be interested in. You know, the problem is we, a lot of people think that, you know, we're, we're a much larger company than we are. You know, we're, we're a pretty small team. Um, I think our marketing team, something like 12 people. Um, and so uh, <laughs> we, we, we've got pretty great reach. Um, we've only got three product managers. So um, we, we, we kind of stick right to our central focus of radio right now um, and haven't really gone too far outside that. Um, but we may in the future, you know, venture outside of our, our, our main niche. So that brings, okay. yeah. that brings us to the Jeep. Oh, yes. Yeah, so that <laughs> is one of our three Jeeps. Um, okay. So that is our... Um, we, we, we take that Jeep on tour and it never sees a moment of off-roading. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it, it's got beautiful 35 inch tires. Uh, yeah. You know, a good lift on it. Um, a, a lot of features that would be great for off-roading. It's, it's a 2021 JL uh, Rubicon. Um, so it's, it's, a, it's a fantastic vehicle and will hold up, you know, very well. But uh, no, that's that's just for tour. We take it out. We've got radios <laughs> installed in the back so people can test them and use them. The uh, the Jeeps that go off-roading, we don't own. They're actually my mother-in-law and father-in-law. Uh, they're Jeeps. They're, they're okay. our sponsored Jeep Jamboree drivers. So that's we attend uh, a lot of Jeep Jamboree events every year. Um, and uh, they were going you know, ahead of when we were the official communication sponsor. 
And then we wanted to have some representation there and they uh, just kind of worked out. We got their vehicle uh, wrapped, not really wrapped. It's the mech magnets. I'm not sure if you guys are familiar with those. I, I think they're oh, specific no. to G. I've, uh, uh, I've used magnets in autocross, but I don't know about mech magnets. I heard yeah. So, so mech magnets are, I, I think she only does them with G, um, but pretty cool con um, concept. Um, pretty cool company and the lady who runs it. You know, they slap the magnets on. They've got our logos, everything. Uh, it looks like a wrap. And it protects the Jeep from, you know, brush on the trail. Huh. So. Interesting. Dude, I'm, I'm waiting for Chris. To, I'm waiting Googling for Chris so hard. Picture up here. <laughs> I got nothing. No. Hey, guys, give me give me one moment. I got to put my charger in real quick, and I'll be right back, okay? No, yeah, you're good. no problem. I wanted to say, is one the Gladiator? I found a Gladiator. I don't think it's a gladiator because it doesn't look like it has anything attached to it on the outside. If it's not wrapped or not stickered or magneted, then it's well, it's a white like it's theirs. It's a white gladiator. Oh, and a dog. And a dog. Uh, Whose dog was that? It wasn't mine. That was Zach's dog? I think so. All right. We're instituting a new rule. If a podcast guest has a dog that Wants to be on the show, can be is on the show. heard off screen but not seen on screen. It needs to be brought on screen. <laughs> Zach, I don't know if you heard that, but now your dog is is legally bound to show its face. <laughs> yeah, Brody, I'm sure he'd love to. Hey, Brody, come here. Come here, Brody. Come here, Brody. Oh, come I here. love this rule. This is great. Oh, Brody's oh awesome. <laughs> He's a good boy. He's just a little <laughs> loud and can be silly sometimes. Uh, Imagine for the audio listener, for the audio listener, we now have a dog on the show. <laughs> All right, I, I was prepared with my computer, but not with my phone, so now I am uh, good to go. You're completely set. Cool. Is is Brady a mutt? Uh, he is a mutt. Uh, we, my wife got his DNA done because you know, of course, she did. Yeah. Um, As one does. Yeah. And yeah, he's got like Jack Russell Terrier, American Strat. Okay. I, what is it? What is it? I, my wife. My wife could tell you. I couldn't tell you. He's, <laughs> he's got a little of the terrier head. Yeah, I can see yeah. that. I don't. I don't see any of the Jack Russell. It looks like a big dog. <laughs> <laughs> not a small. Not a Jack Russell sized dog. But you see the Jack Russell when like you just come in, when someone comes into the house, super excited, eager to greet you, just like high energy dog. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. But he's got an off button, so good. Uh, it's not. It's That's not too bad. <laughs> That's funny. This is now. So I the found a white August. gladiator. That's that's not that's not the Midland, because it doesn't no, look I wrapped. Think, I think that's a, a a vehicle that we had wrapped years a few years back. Okay. We do have a gladiator that we take to Jeep Jamboree as well. Um, it's my in laws' brother. Okay. So he was going to the events as well. Uh, you know, we, it's a we're 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 a family here in Midland. We're small. It sounds like a family affair. Yeah. It looks. Yeah. Man. It definitely feels like you need to know somebody. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, we were we were looking for consistent representation um, at the Jeep Jamboree. Mm. Um, but, you know, it's hard for people. You've got to be retired to go to all these events, you know? Yeah. And the people yeah. we were talking to, uh, you know, they could go to a couple, two, three events. Uh, but, but my father-in-law, you know, he got to retire early. So he's still young and active. And he goes to, he wants to go to as many of these as he can. And he... He takes his RV, drags his Jeep, and um, he'll go to a mall, you know? There's a, it, many worse ways to spend your time. Right? That, that yeah. is fun. That's a good gig. That, that is no, something they, they, that, like, in the future, I, I probably wouldn't want to hang out with those guys. Like, I, they're, the, the site or the spotters are so good. There's such a well yeah, the event. The only problem is you thought that your, you know, your 20 rig group was a lot on the trail. Jeep chamber is like you, know, you can double that and still I did, have a day. I did camp Jeep in like Chris, that was 15 years ago. I know, but they seem to do a pretty good job of like keeping each run pretty reasonable. No, we, we need to have a Jeep Jamboree rep on the show to talk about <laughs> it. I've been meaning to reach out to them for a while, okay. but we should, we should do that. If you, if you need a contact, let me know. We, you know, we work Please. pretty closely with them. So yeah, you can you, you shoot me an email. I'll, I'll we would love I'll, I will send them an email after that. That's <laughs> nobody realizes when you start a podcast, you'll, you've just like increased 5 million times the amount of emails you send and or receive. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Quite a lot. So Zach, what's in your personal garage? Do you have any interesting off-roaders? 
Oh, my, in my garage, I don't have anything off-roading. Um, I used to have a Prius, which is yes. the opposite of off-roading, but it's an EV, which is important here, kind of an EV. Well, the best off-roader is the one you care about the least. <laughs> I knew oh, you were well, going to well. say that. I will always remind every guest, they're like, that's oh, not an off-roader, like how much you care about it. <laughs> Toyota Prius stage <laughs> rally is a thing. Is it? So I, no, I, I, but uh, it should be. I, <laughs> I don't do much of I don't do much of the overlanding um, or off roading right now. Um, I would like to in the future. I, I've got to drive, you know, at the Jeep Jamber Chamber events a couple of times, and it is it's a thrill. Like going right. through some mm-hmm. of these obstacles gets the blood pumping. You just like when you get through, you just feel so great. <laughs> um, but I do uh, I do motorcycles, so I've got a couple of motorcycles in my garage. Um, other than that, I, I don't drive a very masculine vehicle. It's an Elantra, a Hyundai Elantra 2016. Do they're not very bad. reliable. They're, they're yeah. good. A to B, yeah, homework. A to B. Yeah, yeah they were. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but uh, I, I've got the two motorcycles, which I, I get good use out of. And um, I actually am going to set them up with radios as well. because we do, we do some cool. uh, pretty large group rides. But uh, I've got a Harley Road King. Okay. Um, it's actually gorgeous. It's an American flag paint job. Um, but it's, it's a custom one it's it's like nothing you, you guys have probably ever seen before um, and then i've got my my one that i can beat up and like daily driver my uh, vulcan it's a okay. 1500 cc vulcan so good power speed very comfortable but it's just not uh beautiful like my uh like my road king vulcans are kind of like sleeper cool though do they do my my vulcan can send it it's faster than my harley uh, it's Believe faster, it. lighter, more CC. I mean, it's just, it's a better performing uh, vehicle than, mm-hmm. than the Road King. I just grabbed generic Vulcan, so I could be completely wrong with this one. I think that's a <laughs> victory. No, that, that's a Vulcan. It's, a Vulcan. A Vulcan. Like it's probably um, See how much 800. I know. It seems like it's like an 800 or, or 900, <laughs> just a smaller Vulcan. Mine's 1500, so it, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a big boy. Um, 1500. <laughs> so... For frame of reference, on our last episode, we had a guest on who oh, oh. has done the Mongol Rally. Our, our next episode. Next episode. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> the last episode we recorded, we did the Mongol Rally. And if you run the Mongol Rally, the size limitation for engine is under 1.2 1. 1. liters. 1.2. So your, your Vulcan's bike engine is bigger than any of the cars. <laughs> You're disqualified. Yeah, yeah. Mongol. They ran like a Nissan Micro, which is what do you say? It's not. not none of it was good or big. It it was me- it was nine hundred and ninety eight cc's, I think. Hmm. So, so it keeps the vehicle just just very light, and I guess the driver's weight's going to matter quite a bit too, huh? So the, yeah, they the said weird part about it was a problem. Yeah, the weird part yeah. about it is like it's not actually like a a race it's just you drive from london to the capital of mongolia and and getting to the end is winning took him took him forever 50, but like 52 days something oh. we did a whole episode on it we come next week uh <laughs> but uh, or last the, the, last week the best part of the like the thinking of it is is they didn't want you to pick a truck a land cruiser a a, mm. a defender they wanted you to pick something that shouldn't be doing it so it breaks. So something you have to disposable. Stop. So you have to talk and interact with people. They he he tells great stories about being in Turk, not Turkmenistan. That was the horrible place. Tajikistan. He went through a lot. All of the stands, I think. So yeah. sounds like it. Uh, yeah, it just Ross. He sh- remind me to send you the link to the place that they went to. Like he just left off the the fact that there's a hole in the earth that is always on fire somewhere. That's that's Kazakhstan. Uh, well, yeah. yes, I think because there's a lot going on there actually right now. Yeah, um, right now politically. Yeah, and and they yeah. and they brought up that uh, flaming hole in the ground. Yeah, whatever it is. So yeah, so a uh, Russian mining company uh, just decided to quit, and basically they tried to like knock it all over. And when they knocked it all over, they actually ended up like lighting the natural gas escaping the ground on fire. Good God! And it's been consistently burning since they decided to quit. And it's a crater that just has flames in it always. And so as you approach it, you're like, oh, we li-, like people were jokingly referring to it as the gates of hell. Like, no, as you're approaching it, it looks like it's just a giant hole that lets you go into the center of the earth. Like, oh, it's terrifying. awful. Uh, it, did you see the video of the ski lift in North Carolina? A ski lift stopped and a pipe burst under it and it was just blasting people. 
Ugh. I'll oh. have to send you guys that video later. That sounds awful. It's the antithesis of the gates of hell in uh, in Kazakhstan. But yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, so shoot, was it shooting water at them? Yeah, it was. I think it was like water main that somehow just exploded. And it's a ski place, so it's under yeah. freezing anyway. So now you're wet. Yep. And I'll, I'll I'll send you a video. And, and you're on the lift with no yeah you know, nothing open from the wind. Not yeah. a bubble lift. Open. Uh, lift. Yeah. That sounds miserable. But, yeah, Oof. that would be awful. Talk about tangents. <laughs> yeah. See, Zach, you were joking. There aren't a lot of Chevys on y'all's page. <laughs> no, no. If, if you guys want to take some pictures of the ones we send you, you can. You can be the first. I was definitely, uh, definitely. Yeah, I got. I, I didn't realize that, that that's what your build was, but that's pretty cool. I, I actually found a Ford. Liked it. <laughs> got a Ford. I yeah, we, Ford. we get some of the Ford uh, 150, 250, 350s. Um, they're aluminum, so you know you, we got to do most of our mountings magnetic. Oh. So we got to do some special mounts for them usually. What's the workaround for that? That didn't even occur to me because now like Chevy's going to be doing aluminum beds or, or they do like a composite something. Tip, so typically we try to get like, um, we do have a metal plate with the adhesive that they can put on it, but you're okay. not going to get a full ground plane out of that. Um, you know, if you're in a small group, you know, three and a half to five mile range, it probably won't matter. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, if you have some kind of bars, um, we've got like a bracket mount that you can put your antenna on things like that. So, oh, so like up on the roof rack, you can kind of get it. Yeah. On the roof mm -hmm. rack, you can probably have tons and you could use one of those short sleek ones. That way you don't have any clearance issues. It'll just fit right in. Yeah. That's interesting. Over, over the summer, we went to Montana and as we were driving out, I was playing the game of like GMRS or WeBoost, like trying, cause they all kind of <laughs> look just about but like WeBoost was always way high off the back of a sprinter van i was like I'm, they're trying to get as high as possible i knew what mm -hmm. that one was so okay so I, I got a question for you which you may or may not know but uh pros and cons of front or rear mounting for the antenna if you're going to mount it on your front bumper or like there's all those mounts that go rear bumper or hinges of the tailgate what's the yeah, uh, so, good and bad so the the good thing about mounting it on the front side right it's a short run through the firewall uh you can have it in there tuck it away very nicely um the good thing about doing it on the back side is you don't have to run it through the firewall at all you can just kind of if you if you're if you don't care about having some wire out there or you can get in the channel pretty easily mm -hmm. um you can you can avoid having to get under your vehicle try to put it through the grommet of the firewall which is kind of a pain uh but as far as like performance there shouldn't be too much. I mean, as long as you're, um, you know, your the body of your vehicle will always have some obstruction. So if it's coming from ahead of your vehicle, uh, having it in the back will be slightly obstructed mm -hmm. and vice versa coming the other way. So if um, you're always like front gunner or running at the rear, you know, yeah, you can yeah, I mean, that, mount that would, exactly, accordingly. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. And, and, and even if you do like a back bumper, a lot of the, that's why people use the fire stick because it goes up over the, uh, vehicle yeah. and so it gets above the never, never occurred to me <laughs> i yeah. i had 20 was, years of running fire sticks <laughs> yeah i had a sweet one on the tj that like i bought it off like i think i bought it on ebay like just like this is very early 2000s ebay and it like i took my rear spare mount off and put this metal piece between on the bolts and then like sank it all back on and then that gave me like 10 inches and then the fire stick went on that and then that was over the soft top mm -hmm. which i had a soft top i didn't really need the fire stick but it was it was what everyone else had on their jeep like that's what i was supposed to do like but no i i like the the stealth antennas i think they look fantastic yeah that's cool i've never seen that before that's that's really game changer you really hadn't no. seen those before no no oh. We're, maybe we're knowledge. ahead of the times out here in the Midwest because I feel like I see them on every <laughs> truck every other day. <laughs> we don't have lifted trucks in the Northeast. I only see them when I'm oh. actively on the trail with them. And most of us run like fire stick type stuff. <laughs> but that's so interesting. And well, that, that's my deep question of the night. <laughs> yeah, no, no, those antennas are great. Uh, I get a lot of customer service questions. People always ask what's the best antenna. And I leave them to that just because it looks good. Do you want to have any clearance issues? And uh, it performs really well. So 
Mm-hmm. There's a, they do some good testing. You can find testing of, of intense versus competitor on YouTube. So if, you, if you're ever interested in, in, in putting in 20 minutes to, to find out that information, uh, you can find it on YouTube. I don't do it very often, but uh, it does exist out there. It's also the kind of thing you can just put on the truck and forget about it, like just leave it there, you know, versus some of those like magnetic roof mount stuff with a stick you got to take off. Or I always took the fire stick off just like going through parking garages. But that's the kind of thing that's not, it just it just becomes part of the truck. Oh my Absolutely, gosh. yeah. Yeah. Chris, what are you looking for? I know I, you're looking, you're trying well, to hunt something down on here. No, I found an Audi. Great looking Audi on the Instagram page. <coughs> it's an all road. Derek would be so proud. Eric, we need to have Derek back on the show. Yeah, I'll, no, I'll that, that's, um, that is, oh, see, a that's big. a, that's WeBoost. What is that? Is that WeBoost or is that? This is the GMRS right here. Huh. The antenna. I, I would have thought that was ham. And that's, I'm assuming that's WeBoost off the back, which is the cell phone extender. So, you know, you'd be surprised with vehicles uh, with these radios. We actually have a Corvette club um, and they go around to, you know, the Corvette shows and and these are beautiful vehicles and uh, they they install the radios in it and like drill everything in. Like, and I, I would never, you know, I would never drill into a Corvette or do anything like that or even, you know, risk any damage, but they, uh, you know, they set them up and, I don't know if we have any of those on the, I'm sure we have them somewhere on the uh, Instagram. I'm, or I'm scrolling but, so fast right now. <laughs> but, okay, so, uh, <laughs> but yeah, you'd be, the, you'd be surprised. What's the strangest vehicle or group that you've had to approach you to do something with radios? You have like somebody with a sharp or something. With a what? A <laughs> sharp. Have you, you haven't seen these things? I don't even know what that is. No. Oh my God. Oh, I man. got a sharp for There's you. There's this company called Argo and they make this thing called the sharp and it's, it's so great it's Hold on. i gotta get one like, without the arc it's designed for for like the russian back country and it's basically just like a, a cat like a, a small rectangular cabin with two seats and then like a troop carrier style back and oh, it's that's on the these... arc that's the arc that's different <laughs> no that's that's all of the sherps i think but basically oh, here it, i it's, got I got a Sherp with an arc connected. It, it looks like, um, there you go. Oh, I love so, it. <laughs> so the Sherp is just the front and the thing can, it can float. Like if you drive it into a lake, it just, it, start, it's It is positively it's just, buoyant and it's not because of the tires. Yep. And uh, it can drive up like a three foot vertical wall and climb over it. And it can go like 2,500 miles on a tank of tank gas. Of gas. Top speed's only 25 though. Yeah. You know. That, that's what a Sherp is. I don't think I don't think I would trust its buoyancy. Like if, if you wanted me to be on it while going over water, I would probably decline. There that are doesn't, that doesn't look like it's uh, light enough to float. If, there are it, journalists who have done it. Yeah, There's like it's, of, oh man. it's it. You want to talk about a YouTube it's like rabbit a hole? Over. Oh. <laughs> My favorite part is like they open the front glass, even though like this is in the water chugging along and they yep. just pop the front glass open and like because it's not splashing into the cab like you're not running into waves at all yeah, yeah. even like five miles per hour but or yeah i, th- I think not, it's but... uh i think it's only it's like two to five in the water like it's really not still fast it's so cool so anyway so what's the strangest the strangest most eclectic thing that somebody's throwing a radio in gosh I, i've got no idea I, I i'd have to really uh rack my brain on that one but uh you know we we see them and i've seen them in in you know, many different a vehicle, uh, nothing, nothing too crazy or unique, but, uh, um, a lot of antique vehicles, obviously, um, a lot of, uh, you know, classic cars and the Corvettes like they've done and, um, all sorts of farm equipment and farm trucks that, uh, mm-hmm. uh you know, are, are, are beat to hell, but no, I, I can't think of one thing that, that sticks out. That's just, uh, you know, uh, crazy to me. So when, when you're talking about putting them on, on your motorcycles, is that, mm-hmm that's then like a unit on the bike and then bluetooth to the helmet so, so right now it, it would be corded to the helmet okay. um but bluetooth is a um is a big focus of ours and something we want to be able to offer um in the near future so we so that there can be wireless capabilities not just you know from radio to headset but uh, a whole a whole uh, variety of wireless functionality that uh 
you know, that may be some stuff that customers aren't even thinking about the way to use the radio right now. Yeah, I'm trying to scroll to find what would be on the website to put on a motorcycle. Like, I don't know. <laughs> so I, I, I would tell you how I do. Do you ever see the rain mounts? Yeah. Do you, do rain mounts? Mount? So we actually offer them on the website as well. Um, I have one right they here. Have a, yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> so I would do um, a ram mount tough claw uh, with the arm and then to a diamond base to our radio bracket. And I would just fasten that onto the uh, handlebars. Okay. And then I would run uh, the 275, which has, um, you, it's got a place to plug in the headset from the mic. And then I would plug it in and... Uh, we would communicate to people, you know, corded, but uh, you could have, have however many different people you want on your on your channel. That's something I never would have even that would have never occurred to me. But if it works, I've it works. Seen, I've seen hell of a lot easier than trying to yell. <laughs> no, the, I mean the wind's too crazy. It just I can't even talk to my wife when she's on the back. Like I, I she can't hear me. I can't hear her. We need an intercom, I think. Um, but. Uh, <laughs> No, um, I, I've seen people do it with walkie-talkie. So they've got the walkie-talkie and then like the headset corded. Yeah. And mm -hmm. I figure let's just do the same thing with the micro mobile and get you know, way more range. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So when you're talking about like doing group rides, you were talking about like multiple motorcycles kind of thing. Yeah. So my, I, I was actually the last person to get into it in my family, but um, we've got about 30 plus people who we all go out and ride together on occasion. Um, and, you know, from front to back, obviously, you can't communicate with hand signals or anything. Right. There's stuff comes up in the road and um, you, you communicate by like pointing your feet if you're the lead guy and then like everyone behind points your feet. <laughs> so, you know, there, there's, a, there's a better way to do it, potentially. Also, stuff like U-turns are hard to communicate, you know. Mm -hmm. I've, uh, I've dropped my bike because I thought somebody was turning left and they're doing a U-turn. And so I'm turning left and, oh, no. and then they're, you know, right where I'm trying to turn. Oh. So it's... Um, yeah, they're, they're, they, they have a lot of uh, benefit if you can communicate verbally to people instead of using the hand signals. That's, I was trying to get yeah. to ram mounts. I'm slow. Can't argue that. That's, <laughs> yeah, that, that's an absolute. So ram mounts, if you look on our site, actually, we've got, um, I offer a suite of ram mounts now. I, I've been working with them for <laughs> the last year. And so we, we actually package a few other different parts with some fasteners so that people have a, a ready to go solution for our radios do you have something for the mic to land so it can go to a ram mount i do um i've got uh, the suction cup is what i do with it so we have a suction cup to arm to mic clip a mic okay. hang plate basically um and you just attach Ooh. it to your windshield and it hangs right there so that is something we're gonna have to have a conversation about because that that would work perfectly for my application and and yeah. i know this is Ooh, not yeah, exactly like what you were describing but like do you do you find so when i go to the mountains <laughs> my suction cups always fall off headed up the mountains because it i'm assuming temperature it is temperatures dropping so much pressure the day yeah. That's pressure's lessened and the it's literally just west of Denver every single time at some point before Eisenhower on 70, my Ram Mount yeah. suction cup falls off. That's why I don't use suction cups. Oh, I, I haven't taken them to the mountains yet. Um, okay. But that makes sense. Like once you refasten it with the new pressure, does it hold? Yeah, like once we're backing out, like yeah. it's, it's normally like the end of my drive up when it falls off and it's just like, all right, well, the phone can sit in the cup holder because I'm almost done anyway. I know where I'm getting off. And then yeah. the next day when I finally, like we've got the kids and then wherever we're staying and I've freaking unload and then I'll put it back up. Yeah. So, but yeah, I, you know, I, I haven't experienced that myself, but that, that makes sense. I mean, um, I think from changing pressures, like I guess the air within the suction cup that's trapped yeah. uh, could reduce mm -hmm. or expand and, and pop it off. But I assume if you put it back on in that same pressure, it would be yeah. fine until you again, go to a different different else uh, so drop back down and altitude then, yeah it can't actually get it off because it's done the reverse yes yeah. exactly like as, as you've you gone out your now like your windshield <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing with your ram out nothing i'm replacing the windshield what are you doing yeah <laughs> just you're gonna what we do. the windshield out with the ram out <laughs> by the way the the, the one i just yeah, had up there with the two suction cool. cups and multiple arms like that's the most robust yeah. ram mount i've ever seen <laughs> that's intense Seriously. They've got some yeah. neat products. They make a lot of stuff. 
That was very interesting. Yeah, I bought this like modular slide thing that the rim mount base goes into. And that's how I'm going to be, you know, set the phone up. It'd be a great place to just clip the mic. Just put like a ball the, on with the like modular a, slot. Do you fasten that into your dash? How do you attach yes. that? Yes. It is drilled through a mesh speaker mount, super glued and bolted. So we weren't yeah, going to talk about how not going it anywhere. was, but we're <laughs> Yeah. I can't wait to share pictures for that. Oh God. It's so <laughs> it, it, it's a 10 step solution for a one step problem. But yeah, very interesting. So sweet. Yeah. I don't I don't have any other questions about radios. Well, I, I appreciate <laughs> you guys having me on. Um excited for the MXT 500 launch. Um it should be available by the time your viewers get to listen to this. So um cool. for the most part, it will only be available at midlandusa.com. Okay. There's a limited supply, and so we're not you know distributing these out to you know, various vendors. Uh, the, our website would be the best way to get a hold of them. So, mm -hmm. um, any questions? You know, they can come to our customer service team. Um, there's some good review videos by people like Nada Rubicon. So check it out. Easy to use product, 50 watts of power. Um, excited to get this thing to market. And excited to be able to talk to you guys a little bit about it and and the other topics as well. It was a good conversation. Hour and a half went by Definitely. honestly pretty quickly. <laughs> That's, that's how it happens here that that's the goal on the pot like when yeah. we send emails people are like i don't know if i want to talk to you guys for that long we're like as long as it goes quick we'll be okay yeah, yeah. so because it's it's like we learn and we can share experiences so it's it's a good two-way uh two-way conversation but so yeah, the, no, very, the youtube very... video you mentioned was not a rubicon right yeah not a rubicon okay. productions put out a, a pretty good review of it um i think he was the first one to get um a full you know I wouldn't call it an unboxing, but an unboxing <laughs> and, and review of it. Um, and I only won't call it an unboxing because he uh, he hates that term, right? Yeah, there, there it is. You found it. I'm gonna cool. I'm gonna pause it before it actually plays, so that way we don't ding when we put our YouTube video. That up. way we don't get busted. <laughs> yep, that's right. But not a Rubicon Productions. Yep. No, nope. he, he does a lot of radio and a lot of um, off-roading content. So. He's, uh, he's actually grown quite a bit. When I first discovered him, um, you know, he only had like 40,000 subscribers. And then like four months later, he's up to, I think, around 80,000. So he's, uh, wow. he's, he's, uh, he's grown very quickly. He makes some entertaining com um, commentary. He's, uh, he's got a good sense of humor. Cool. Paul. So when, when you're talking about 50 watts, does that pull more on the car's power system too then? Yeah, I mean, it's power draw, I believe. Um, gosh, I, I, I don't have the specs right in front of me, but yeah, it, it, does, it does draw more okay. from, the, from the battery. I'm not too terribly concerned. It was just more, I was, yeah. when, I, when I had the Land Cruiser, I had to think about that all the time because like plug, plugging in like the, the phone charger into a 24-year-old cigarette lighter <laughs> was maybe um, hit or miss sometimes. So Your truck has Wi-Fi, well, you know, it'll be fine. Yeah, well, <laughs> now my truck does, that one didn't. <laughs> So these are actually hardwired. They've got too much power to go through the, uh, oh, the wow. cigarette charger. Or okay. 15 watts you can put in the cigarette charger. In fact, they come with the with that adapter. But the big mm -hmm. ones, you uh, you got to put them right on the battery or through the fuse box. For the fuse box, yeah. Definitely. Yeah, fuse boxes. I like, I like having a fuse involved. <laughs> yeah, yeah no, that, right. uh, that's usually my recommendation. Yeah. Um, <laughs> especially if you want to avoid, you know, draining your battery accidentally and all sorts of other issues that come with that. I got 20 amp fuse or is it just 10 or 15 i uh, i couldn't tell you off the top of my head um what, what kind of fuse would have to run through i bet an instruction manual will tell you ross yeah i've, I've got the manual um, but <laughs> imagine uh, that it's not, it's not all me Pol politely telling ross to read the effing manual <laughs> yeah well i I should, I should know there's just uh a lot of details here that I, I can't recall that one. No, I, I, that's, a, that's more than a product okay. sales before. <laughs> <Remember Yeah. that. laughs> Will this fit this truck? I don't know. What's the catalog say, bud? I, I, <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, all right. Sweet. Yeah. Uh, Zach, thank you for joining us. Zach, a lot of fun. I'm, I'm assuming social media wise, it's just at Midland USA everywhere, right? Everywhere. Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, um, at Midland USA. Yeah, you guys did a good job of snagging that quick so that's all consistent everywhere. For real. Yeah. 
because I'm about to read through a list of stuff that's hilarious that it's not consistent everywhere. So <laughs> <laughs> they're different uh, outlets. It's not the same. No, and a second, you're you're gonna eat your words. Uh, so you can rate review this show on iTunes, uh, iTunes, Google Podcasts, uh, Podcast Addict is like our second biggest listening group. I didn't know that. Thank, thank cool. you. Uh, yeah. Um, you can like and subscribe on YouTube if you want. You can see all the pictures that we that we talked about. We try to try to describe them with our words. Try. Uh, you can follow Hooniverse, the Hooniverse on Twitter, the real Hooniverse on Instagram. That's that's where it, it's not the same. That's where the some kids is. sitting on the the Hooniverse on Instagram, and he's not. <laughs> he wanted like crazy money, and Jeff was like, "That's not happening." Yeah. Uh, okay. You can read our writing on Hooniverse, UTV Driver, ATV Rider, and Everyday Driver. Ross is no not like the one from Friends, and I'm at Overlanding Dad. And that, that's our show. Thank you so much, Zach. Show. Oh, yeah, Zach. Thank you. Thank you, Ross. Thank you, Chris. It was fun. <laughs> yes, another one. He said it was fun. Right. <laughs>